today we'll be having with us one of the candidates of uh, one of the parties you know strongly contending for the presidency in 2023 i'll read out his bio before making his introduction and okay the pictures uh, must have shown you but i'll still go through that so we have with us he is uh, a human rights activist uh, he's a pro-democracy campaigner and uh, also a co-founder of an online news agency a uh, practice politician who in 2019 vied for the presidency of nigeria and like i mentioned he's currently in the race for the seat and uh, of course uh, with his pictures you might know him but for those who don't know him i'd like to introduce omoyele shore is the presidential candidate of the africa action congress party so good morning omoyele and welcome to morning to you thank you good, good morning. morning welcome to our show thank you for bringing me okay it's great having you here with us. So I will want to ask a key question. You know, I have uh, uh, over the years been watching you and following you and listening to a lot of things. And uh, one of the key things we all want is an ideal Nigeria. And the ideals of our founding fathers were on, based on fairness, you know, equity, selflessness. But over time, these ideals seem to have eroded and it's no more part of the Nigerian psyche. So how do you intend, if you become president, to reintegrate these ideologies to Nigerian citizens? You know, I think part of this we should question about Nigeria is the foundation upon which Nigeria was independence. Uh, you would realize that most African countries fought for independence. We didn't very much fight for it the way they fought for it. So there is an assumption out there that our founding fathers, as we love to call them, actually wanted all these great things. Uh, but history did teach us a little bit that uh, that was fractured from the beginning. The ones in the north even had opposition to early independence. The ones in the south, you know, clung to some ethnic identity. And the British who put this experiment together also didn't quite leave Nigeria because they had business interests in Nigeria, particularly in the oil sector. And so anybody that's talking about Nigeria and ideal Nigeria now must put together a brand new package and defining factor for that will be a constitution that speaks to these ideals we're talking about and we don't also have a constitution in the recent that our constitution was put together the 1999 constitution was put together by the military and then fraudulently claimed that we the people you know set up this constitution we never we were never there and we did not pass the constitution through a referendum. So a lot of things, honestly, quite a lot of things are wrong with the Nigerian nation. Okay, yes. at this point, let me ask. So if you were to become president, yeah. are you suggesting the constitution should be reviewed or there should will be a total overhaul of it? It should be scrapped. Okay. All right, yeah. Brand new constitution should be made. The Nigerian constitution as it is now, is redefining the Nigerian people as it likes. Most people don't even know what is in the constitution because they weren't part of the constitution making process. So our first um, solution is to put together a new constitution. It's like the, after apartheid ended in South Africa, had they continued with the apartheid era constitution, South Africa would not be a vibrant place today. And I'm not saying that South Africa is the most ideal place to be in the world. They're still struggling <laughs> uh, with a number of things. <coughs> Sorry, land ownership, consumer, I mean, you know, economic issues. But the first thing they did was to put together a new constitution. They had an interim constitution and later they put a constitution in place that spoke directly to their new circumstances. Whatever new circumstances we find ourselves, we must have a question that speaks to it. Now, let me ask you two questions in just a few seconds. 
Yes. You are discussing constitution now, and you've been in this struggle for quite some time now. Yes. And you know that the constitution is legal. Suppose you're permitted to be the president, or you're voted as the president, and someone comes out to say, the constitution on which you stood to gain uh, the presidency was faulty. What would you do? I want to decide this. That's why I'm campaigning now in advance. This will be a witness that I never endorsed the constitution. We are going after the constitution. We have to fix the constitution of Nigeria. Uh, yes. When we got independent, we had the new national anthem. Yeah. Had to be said. Tribe. Has made the fire boy in brotherhood who is stand. As a political leader today aspiring to be the next president of this country, if it comes to pass, we used to still see Nigeria being together in brotherhood or we are divided. You know, our brotherhood cannot be defined by a national anthem. It has to be something that is built on substance. And the only way we can become real brothers is to bring justice uh, to play on the national level or even every local level. Nigeria is broken. There's no question about it. Anybody denying this is just lying to him or herself. And you must fix the country by bringing people who have been alienated, people who have been abused, oppressed, violated together different things have happened to different people across Nigeria and any leadership that wants to play <laughs> that particular stanza of the of, of the national anthem which by the way has been discarded uh, must do so by bringing people together and addressing the monumental injustices that have happened to people there are people whose resources you know have been abused there are people whose rights uh, have been abused there are persons who are just unsafe because of irresponsible leadership in the country. The leaders of Nigeria also go after Nigerians uh, and violate their rights. You know, you see what police did that led to NSAS. NSAS did not start now. As of 1998, I was abducted from the University of Lagos during a protest and detained with over 200 people. They had different levels of decay in their, in their legs because they were shot by the police. That night, they would pick people up and that would be it. You never hear from them again. But it took some 20 or more years later for people to wake up to that. I'm giving that as an example, you know. What about even economic rights of Nigeria? The minimum wage people get paid, which is a slave wage in this country. So you must address all of this holistically before you can say that we are brothers. We'll, we'll become brothers if we live in a just, fair, and egalitarian society. Well, that, yeah. Let's take the issue of succession. You just mentioned people should, <coughs> sorry, sorry about that, people should have you know, their rights duly respected and not it, uh, it not being trampled on. Now, uh, like we all know, in Nigeria, IPOP is a very strong uh, move and uh, it's pushing strongly for secession of the Southeast out of Nigeria. So if you were to become president, are you going to look for some way to reintegrate them or are you going to say, okay, uh, your cries or your aspirations and your ambitions need to be looked into and probably call up for uh, them to have their state and actually let them succeed out of the state of Nigeria? So let me tell you this. Um, about the only presidential candidate running now who's ever met with the leader of IPOP. I met with him in 2019 in New York before I came to Nigeria and I was arrested and detained for four and a half months. And we had extensive conversation about what is going on. And he says to me, all we want is justice. And you see, the right to self-determination is a fundamental right recognized by even the United Nations. Uh, we're having it wrong by killing people who are asking for secession. Because, uh, as I've often been quoted, a lot of Nigerians have mentally seceded from Nigeria. They're not here with us anymore. They're just trapped here. Anybody that can get away now <laughs> has practically left the country. That's the new yes. So, you have to bring people together, talk to them, as I have done. 
I've already done my own assignments in that department. And it will be the easiest thing to address because I already know what they are looking for and how to address them. I go to court on his behalf, Namdi Kano in Abuja, every time he shows up in court. And I get even sometimes physically attacked by the police and thugs. People come there with dagger to kill me because I'm standing by him. I was still in court uh, last week. I mean this week uh, at the Court of Appeal where they're trying to draw the charges. And my position is, how can you be president of Nigeria? and you treat a section of Nigeria with violence. And the other section, with people even with more sinister agenda, you send them money, you know, hostage money, ransom, you know, and you rehabilitate them. We're talking about Boko Haram and bandits now. There's a whole place dedicated to rehabilitating Boko Haram in Gombe. And these are well-known killers. These are people who are bombed to churches, They've killed entire villages, and they are still doing it. You treat them with respect. You pay them salary. And then people in the Southeast who have had to deal with monumental injustices, you know, the entire, an entire region that was almost wiped out by, I mean, during the Civil War. Three million people dead. You're still sending soldiers to go and kill them. Like I said, I'm asking the ifs, hypothetical questions. Now, uh, the issue of the Biafran war and the genocide that was committed there, like uh, we saw in Europe after the end of the Second World War, Jews that were killed, you know, till date we have uh, trucks, funds, museums, <coughs> memorials, all uh, for the Holocaust and uh, remembering those Jews that were killed. Is there a possibility that? Uh, uh, the Igbos or the people of the Southeast will get some form of recognition or, uh, you know, repatriation or things will be done to um, bring the ideals of, uh, uh, you know, reconstruction, not just in words, but in the true sense of it, to that region. Absolutely. Um, first, as the leader of Nigeria, we must make a public apology to the Igbos for the atrocities the nation of Nigeria, the country of Nigeria committed against them. That's number one. Because what has happened is that the healing that ought to have been done was not done because lip service was paid to no vanquish, or no, I mean, no victor, no vanquish. But we know who was vanquished and we know the people who took victory literally and they're rubbing it on the face of the Igbos. And there was no integration that was really done. Uh, so all of this must be put in place. You know, it's not just rehabilitation, but <clears throat> where necessary, real compensation. Uh, when Japan was defeated after the Second World War, America came in there and helped them to become what they are today. Germany, you know, was defeated. You know, they, they were assisted by the people who defeated them. That's the reason why they produce some of the best goods internationally uh, today. So the same thing needs to happen in the Southeast. Interestingly, Japan and, the, and Germany have something similar with the Southeast. They are very industrious, you know. They want to be the ones producing your first, you know, new automobiles, which they are doing even now at level of assembly. You know, they want to produce your best shoes, you know. Give them that chance, give them that right. Stop caging them because they're not asking for political power as much as they're asking for economic independence. So I totally believe a leader in Nigeria that wants to unite and create a brotherhood you are reading out of that um, national anthem must do something way beyond uh, Superficial, you know, second like Niger bridge type, type of. One of the presidential candidates actually met with Nambikan, and the world is asking for justice. And that justice means that they have never had leadership position in this country. This is one of the things that if they caught, they will not be agitating for some of the things they are agitating for. And right now, they have a son from the East. 
contesting just the way you are doing. If you are supporting them, they can with what you are saying. Why don't you support the candidate from the southeast? The question you should ask yourself is if Unam Dikano would have supported that candidate if he was free today. No, you, you no I'm, I'm, I'm telling you. There was nothing, there was nowhere Unam Dikano ever said that the East is looking for the presidency of Nigeria. That's, told you about. that's you are asking me what I know, and I'm telling you what I know. There was no conversation between me and him in which he says, hey, Sure, we want to be president, the Igbos want to be president of Nigeria, support will never. But you said there was so what I'm, was no, you had, you had, what I'm saying is that there's no point putting words in my mouth. No, I'm not putting words, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just right. telling you. Hey, hey, uh, let's uh, push that aside. Now, uh, you know, uh, for the last time you came and contested for the presidency, uh, you know, things went on. But some people at that time uh, brought up an over myth that you were more or less a third force. And uh, that was why you were easily displaced at the polls. Can you uh, demystify this, uh, demystify this uh, urban myth that seems to resonate with, um, let me say, the youth, and, and who I believe are the ones who really look up to the kind of ideals you propagate. So I've, been, I've always been opposed to the, the idea of calling any presidential candidate, a group of presidential candidates, third force. It presupposes from the beginning that you've given up your right to be a front runner in the race. What we are looking for are the real forces against the old hags in the country. And that's where I stood. So in 2019, a number of young people came together who are presidential candidates and said they wanted to choose one of us uh, to be the candidate that they can support. And I went to the meeting the first they realized that they were serious because they were still talking about how to visit the old hacks that we want to display. Some of them said, one of them said to him that they can only be comfortable with a less radical person. So I knew they were talking about me. I can't visit any of those people. I don't believe in them. I spent my, I spent six years so a few kilometers from here, University of Lagos, displacing Babangida from power. I can't turn around and go and visit him in Mina. It's not possible. And that's where the things that were coming up. And you notice now that all those young people in 2019 pretty much disappeared from public view as soon as the elections went. And it's me that they thought or this claim was too radical. I'm the only person still standing. I'm not just sitting or standing uh, on the issues that are important. I'm doing so after spending time in jail, you know, after I've been you know, confined to Abuja for three solid years. My international passport seized at the point my younger brother killed in this country. I was shot at, my nose bridge was broken by the police in Abuja. There's nothing they didn't do to me. But I kept standing straight because I can't bend over so that nobody will climb on my back. And today, I'm the only candidate from that era, four years ago, who is still standing because the ideas were about substance. And I found out, quite honestly, that most of them were sponsored by the old parties to confuse the youth who were clamoring for real fundamental change. You supported Bwari in 2015, of course. Because we saw so many articles from your Sahara reporters. Now, if you say false, let's go this way. Okay. If you elected, if you, if, if you elected president, no, 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 it, it is, it, it is a common knowledge. But if you, if you refute it, let's take it that way. Now, let's go into so twenty. if you say I support and I refute it, you uh, No, I would believe the one you're saying because I'm because seeing you. <laughs> I'm seeing you face to face now. Since you said no, it's no. Yeah. But it's well, now, what we're looking at now is 2023. Yes. If you elected president, yes. would you put this set of rules oh, that so fire this country? To if you s it, it's not only these last ones. You know the experiment we did with Abacha. 
Nigeria. We're still collecting money from Abacha. The only reason we're getting other money is because Abacha died. There are former head of state in this country who are alive who stole more money than Abacha. The monies are still available. We ought to get all of those monies back. It's not about probing them. It's every dime you stole, you know, should be returned because it's the people's money. The properties, the companies that they created with these stolen funds, we should take them back. There's, there's nothing to be apologetic about. You're talking about Jews who were mistreated by Germans. Germans are still paying them till tomorrow. If they find glasses, eyeglasses of a Jewish man that was taken in 1935 by Germans, they will take it back from the person and jail the person. And this is a long time ago. Yeah? I want it's just 1960. 1960 is 62 years ago. We should be able to get back from anybody who stole from us anything they stole from us because it belongs to the It's the reason the country is stalled today. The other day we got $23 million from Abacha. It's like we've been having it in a savings account, right? So why can't we do the same for Buhari, uh, Abbasanjo, anybody who's uh, been involved in stealing Nigeria? You take. Permanent secretary. I know permanent secretaries in Abuja that have 42 houses. And they can't afford even one with their salaries. You know, take over those places, convert them to schools, you know, for our children. Because it's their future that we, um, you know, preferred. Okay, let me uh, uh, box in at this point. Uh, before uh, he went at you with a question and you told him that he did not have enough proof to, you know, uh, no, that uh, no, it's no, false. No, but uh, there were videos true. from mm. that period that yeah. showed you vigorously, like uh, this occurred yeah. in 2015, uh, this, those this, videos. This, this was a video I uploaded myself. This was okay. after the election. Can you listen to me? I uploaded this picture. You see what's around my neck? It's a press tag. Yeah. I was coming from the international, um, the, the recent ICC where they were announcing the election results. The as a journalist. Convention Co yeah, 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 conference center. And coming to Buhari's, um, this is office Rally, in Abuja, after they had announced the results. Okay. And Jonathan had called Buhari and considered defeat. So, because Sahara Reporters was the first to publish the results of the election before even INEC did, when these young people saw me at the center, they mobbed me. And I took the video, someone took the video and gave it to me. And I uploaded it myself. If you go to Sahara TV page, you see it. This was after the election. I was not campaigning for Buhari. This was after the election. Okay, Never you, campaigned you said for Buhari. That was after the results were, were announced. Yeah, this is the day that the results were announced. You know, youth who were happy. But yeah. I was also seeing uh, the uh, major symbol of the APC, which is a group. Well, I wasn't the one carrying it. I don't yeah, control what people. Like, uh, I don't control what people. No, I'm not saying you. Control. What I'm saying is that you are. Well, I've just explained to you. I'm just. You were seen. It's like me saying. Yes. Like, uh, maybe I went somewhere, you understand, and maybe they're taking something like marijuana there, and I'm seeing them, maybe uh, dancing with them, and maybe somebody at that moment, unfortunately, dares me that, can you hold this thing, and I'm holding it, and, and the cops, holding, the cops holding. come in there, and right there, so, see so me hold that marijuana. I, I will have no defense to say, unless you've got breathalyzers and all that, to say, so, I did not so, take a so soak out if, of this. If you are caught in the company of people smoking marijuana, <laughs> you expect that you be taken to jail without finding out what you are doing. We know the way the Nigerian system works. You'll be packed in the van before no, you get yeah, to explain. No, 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 you've no, experienced I, things I, like me. that. I said that. No, you've experienced no. things like that. No, no, so, but that doesn't make it. What, what you are doing now is repeating the injustice of a lie to against me. No. And even efforts to correct you 
You are resisting it. No, I'm not resisting. You're we're resisting. just, we're you're just trying to. Uh, no, no, no. So I, we will not make. No, 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 no. no, no. We're not casting as persons on your past, on your person. Jenny, let me just. No, we're not casting as persons on your person. We're just trying to clarify issues that you know we want people to have a clearer insight. Don't forget that you made an assertion of force. You said on TV a few seconds. Which was that. Yeah, so but sad. that was what most people would say. But and now you, you are terrifying that you, you did the not. Way yeah, but I do know, know that way. Okay, in leaders. 2015, yes. you never contested. Yes. And you never supported the incumbent president that time. You know. were vehemently against uh, 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 Jonathan. Meaning, meaning people have yeah, people the thinking. Have people have the yes. thinking that if we are not on the side of the incumbent president at that time, you were on the side of the opposition no, party. Why would I be on the side of the and no, that is wrong so in the country? you were not on any side. No. Where were I, you then? I was doing my journalistic work. Groundbreaking journalism. Sahara for certain? Yes, that's what I was doing. And you can't fault it because every day that I do my work, you can find evidence of what I'm Now, I let me take you back why to today. I'm able to dispute a lie you're telling me. Yes, today, you today. No, no lies, yeah. just try okay, to. Okay, let me take you to issues. today. You've said severely that Peter B has no structure and that is campaigning for APC. You said that I've heard you no, there. No, you see, this is part of mm -mm. You have said that. that. No, mm -hmm. that is campaigning for. Because there's nothing I've said. He has, that is campaigning. In the last. That whatever he's doing, he's doing it for the victory of APC. See, this is, this is what you I never said that. What I said is that the Labour Party that Peter B is part of is an orphanage for internally displaced politicians. <laughs> what a word to use. Yes. And it is because in 2019, the Labour Party endorsed Buhari. It's public knowledge. In 2019, when I ran as president, I had 3,000 votes. The Labour Party presidential candidate had 5,000 votes. So when they were, you know, mocking us in our party, I replied to them that the structure you have would only deliver 5,000 votes in 2019. Now you supported and we got 000 that 000. was Labour Party. No, that, was in Labour Peter, Party. that was in Peter B as a presidential hopeful no, of the Labour Party. Labour Party is a political party. Yes. Right? Yes. That had been in existence for a long time. Peter B joined the Labour Party two weeks after he left the PDP. Right. So, what I'm telling you is the reason why I said it's an orphanage home for internally displaced. Peter B was displaced by his brothers. And mentors in PDP because he couldn't cope with the money needed to become their presidential candidate. So he decamped to the Labour Party. Two weeks after he left the PDP, a few days later he had become their presidential candidate. So you get my analysis. So that is exactly what I said. I have not changed my position. Mr. Shofor, do you know that the youth, the youth that of this I'm country? Things that I didn't say. I, I've always said that I don't believe in the structures of the big political parties. That when the people are ready, they will become the structure for any party they choose. The youths of this country yes. were looking up to you as a role model. I think very many of them are still doing that. Yeah. And they, when they see a shift, they place their allegiance to the obedient movement. They expected that you will be part of that obedient movement. See, because it's practically so this, for the youth. This inherent bias of some of you has turned you to something else. Where did the general youth meet? If you, if you, no, if you see. Just say that a politician has people following him. Because before you make that assumption, you must go through scientific and empirical evidence. That what is more scientific than seeing what you could see and touch? What is more scientific are, than are that? Are you saying that Peter B has more youth than even it is parties. known, it is seen, it is touched, and we can verify that. So you that touched it? How did you touch it? We could see the people. Which, which you also have seen that it is which just a media thing. thing. Like From what, what, what the thing. point I'm making to you. It's a media thing. Do you still think it's a media thing? So, so, right. if, if, you want, if you want to compare rallies, let, let's, let's, let's go to the rally. Several rallies. So let's go to the rally part. Of use 
Let, yes. Let's go to the Labour Party. Let's go to the Labour Party. And do not misunderstand me. The number of people that the APC people got to the rally in the party yesterday, have you seen it? Yes, I've seen it. Have you ever seen that size with any other political party, ever politician? Or you go to Pakwansu and Khan? Have you seen his rallies? And I've seen and other places? I've seen it. And do they not dwarf some of the rallies you're talking about? Have you seen articles, rallies? Now, those Huge. people, those people rallies, you mentioned. If you, want to, if you want to use rally as a political evidence to judge who has more youth followers, then you can then say that Pakwansu has more youth followers than Peter B. Because they have bigger rallies in his own constituency than yeah. Peter can boast of. Yes. Tinubu has more people following him in the battle. Yesterday, the number of people that rallied for Peter Abe in the battle, a week ago, the same thing with Atiku, wherever he went. So, don't use rallies to judge followers. If you want to use that, you will fall into the same mistake that people make. Because then everybody will be competing with now, rallies. What I'm saying is that you, you as a youth, what I'm, what I'm saying, you as a youth, we expect I'm, I'm you to have one years old. Like I said, you are the model. I said that you are a model the youth are seeing. You can't force anyone to follow any movement. It's not democratic. Don't say that on public TV that people expect me to follow Peter Abe. You know, no, it's wrong. I've been doing what I'm doing now since as two years ago. I started from okay, the last years. Peter Abe, where was he during June 12th? Why did I follow somebody who was in PDP for almost? 16 years out of PDP's existence, and who just ran away from them because they no longer accept him. I have been consistent. I stand on the side of justice, truth, and democratic development for Nigeria. I've sacrificed my time, my energy. You wake up one day and you point at me and say, Why are you not following the government? Why should I follow the government? Okay, you're late, like you said. I can take decisions for myself. Yes. Like you said, yes. uh, you've been in this race for like half of your life. Yes. And uh, you started as a youth, and uh, with your activism, yes. you grew. And even though you are, you are youthful, but you, are not, you can't be categorized as a youth, you are still seen as the face and voice of the lot of Nigerian youth. But there was an independent poll carried out recently uh, that tipped you not to be in the lead or as a top contender. Which what do you think I about it? It's uh, called the uh, uh, ANAP Foundation poll. So what do you think about that? In the first place, that's hogwash. When we're doing their polls, the first thing, if you don't poll me, I can't, you can't tell whether I would have won or not. And you did that deliberately. Second, Anybody that's a campaign manager to a candidate should not be proposed. Peter said that Tedo is one of Peter Abe's campaign managers. Ngozi uh, Weala, who is also one of Peter Abe's strongest uh, supporters. So they are just rigging polls the same way APC and PDP rig elections. That's the truth. That's a strong have, allegation. There's no basis for rigging polls if you are biased. They are these polls, and it's not the first time they will do polls that came out like that. I had to contend and fight Ngozi Weala when she did a poll in 2015, saying that Jonathan would win the election. Did he win? The poll reflected that Jonathan because they want to use the polls to confuse the Nigerian people. All right. That's their candidate. As, 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 as it stands okay, today. Uh, okay, that's, uh, that's how, uh, Yele, I think we've practically run out of time and uh, we're just uh, going on extra time. So, uh, any last words to Nigerians and everybody watching well, you know, the dance floor? I always said this, that Nigerian people should, as a matter of urgency, take a decision at this time not to return back to the era of slavery in the hands of their own brothers and sisters who have mismanaged and ruined the Nigerian nation. All right. Thank you so much. And that is uh, Omoye Dialei Showeri, the presidential candidate.
candidate of the AAC party. And uh, we hope you had a great time here with us on Morning Dew. And we'll be back with you next week with all the great topics and content as usual. Do stay tuned for all the great shows and have a great weekend from us. It's bye now. Thank you for being here.